saying? Like when I when I see somebody and you are looking at me as you walk past, it's not because I, I want to have a conversation with you or talk to you. It's just I'm looking at everybody that goes by. I'm doing the same thing you is. Yeah, but you, but then you're like, why are you still looking at me? I just I look, look at, at everybody. You. And I'm turning my head and you kept looking. That's why I look at you. All right. Okay? I'm not on nothing with you. I'm just seeing. Yeah. I'm just and then being normally, aware of my surroundings just like you. Yeah, normally you, you're not, well, well, the first, the freedom goes to the the person inside the house. So if you, if I walk past your door and you were standing inside your door, I'm not supposed to be looking in there anyways. I'm not looking in, I'm looking at you. I'm just not. Yeah. Okay. I, I know, I'm just, it's just normal behavior. So somebody in my ears just now just told me that you, you, you act like you're in the, you're a prisoner or an inmate or something like that. You know how inmates get mad? when someone looks inside their cell. That's not what I was doing. The dude did this. Or like, like that. So I got, I walked outside of my house to tell him I was looking at you because you uh, you looked back at me. Like the, you gave me that facial expression. So I walked outside of my house or my apartment to tell you that I was looking at you because I look at everybody as they walk past. I was talking the whole time I was standing in the door I was talking to the people who put technology in my body and they were asking me questions about what happened at work and why, why, what do you believe should happen? And while I was doing that, the dude, the dude walked this way. So he walked this way and then when he got like right here, he looked back like, like this. Or like, like he was asking me why am I still looking at him? So. I was standing there talking, the dude was walking this way, like this, and as he got there, he looked back at me like, I, why am I still looking at you? And then I have, I have that camera right there, so it could probably see his facial expression. I, I don't trust that camera at all. Uh, well, I trust it to record, but not to see details. So that guy, the guy was looking back at me, then he, back, he, he lied. He lied very quickly. Right, so you cover your tracks. You know you made a face. So you lie and say the face meant something that it, you know it didn't mean. So the guy lied and said, my facial expression was just, I was just trying to look at you, that's all. But he really was asking you, why are you still looking at me? Like he was a, a thug, like a, like a thug look. So I, I walked outside my house to tell him, hey, I was just telling you, man, look, uh, I was watching you because I watch everybody that walks past and I was talking at the same time So I wasn't even thinking about you beyond seeing your face how your face looks like uh, recognizing features facial features and uh, Like normal people when you see someone walk past you you look at their face the side of their face how their face looks all these personal details that takes like two or three seconds to look at and then if they look sad or like they don't have a facial expression like a normal one you look even longer because you're trying to figure out what's going on with them right so while I was doing that the dude kept looking at me so he was staring at me at the same time and when I kept looking at him he decided to do this or some weird face that tells you stop looking at me or why are you looking at me right now so that's what that dude just did and I tried to tell him I mean, I tried to explain myself like, hey, I'm just looking at you to see what's going on. Not what's going on, but like to look at your facial expression. And then I also know that the first hand, the very first thing you do, the very first right that goes to anybody is that uh, you're not supposed to look inside their house anywhere. So if I'm walking over there and somebody was standing in their door, I'm supposed to just keep walking or I can look inside the door but I'm not supposed to, um, what do you call it? I, I'm not supposed to complain that the person inside the house is looking at me, right? That, <laughs> that's the last, per I'm the last person to be able to complain about that. So the first person to complain about something like that would be the, uh, the, the person inside the house. So that's the point I was trying to explain to him, but I couldn't, the people using technology to keep me from talking or explaining myself in the moment because they want an altercation. If you can't explain yourself while you're talking, an altercation happens. You can have an altercation right afterwards. So I tried to tell him that and uh, I couldn't speak. I couldn't tell you what I just told you right now. 
because someone was using technology to stop me from explaining myself so that an altercation could, could, could happen. Because there's no understanding. There's confusion, there's arguments, and no one is making any sense. So that's what just happened. I know that the, the right of way goes to whoever's standing inside the house. So as long as I'm inside that door, I can look at whatever that's happening outside the door. It's in the public. What's not normal is for him to get mad at me for looking at him, right? That's not normal. You're not supposed to stare inside the door at all and look and see who's inside that door or who's inside that window. So imagine a man was standing there. I'm not supposed to stand here and stare at him and ask him, why are you looking at me? He has the right of way to stand in his doorway and look at whoever's standing here. What's not normal is for the person standing here to complain about the person in there looking at them. So that's what I tried to explain to that dude in like two seconds and I couldn't use, use my memory to find the words to tell you what I just said. And then he was like, uh, brother, I'm sorry, man, I don't mean nothing by it. But he gave me the look. And if I didn't turn this camera on while he was talking to me, I would have, uh, uh, I would have had, uh, I, I, none of it would be recorded. So because I turned the camera on, he backtracked. And they're, they're telling me that the camera inside my body, that there's somebody who can watch everything I do, hear everything I hear, and see everything see all that I can see with technology. They put technology in my body to do that. He's telling me that without that camera, I can't be, I won't be, a pro, I won't be social. I will, I will um, do uh, illegal things unless you're always holding the camera. So they're telling me I should be happy there's a camera inside my body that can record 24 seven. And that's the only thing keeping me safe. So, it's either the cameras inside my body or I'll be holding a camera in my hand for the rest of my life to record all the people around me to make sure they're always behaving the right way. And that's what that dude just did. So he backtracked. He knew how he looked at me. He lied. He knew that that look was for the look that you give somebody to stop looking at you. Stop looking at me. But the right of way goes to the homeowner to look outside their window as much as they want. The person outside their house is not supposed to continue to stare at the person inside the house. And they're also telling me in my ears right now, the dude that lives up there just gave you more work to do. Now, if you want to be honest to the public, you'd have to take the camera, the footage out of your camera, out of that camera, and out of the camera you're holding and post it online for everybody to see if you're trying to be on well if you want to tell anybody what just happened you'd have to do those two things and that would take an hour maybe two hours for me to do that I'm not gonna do it I might post this video because it's, it's easier but I'm not gonna post it I'm not taking that out but I mean he admitted that he was he was still standing here at the time so I guess that's good enough I mean, I guess I, someone told me in my ears it would be helpful if you showed him, if you showed him uh, looking at you the entire time he was walking right here up to like uh, this point, he was still staring at me through the door. So he was walking from there to here, staring into the door because I was looking at him. I was talking at the door, well, near the door. And when he walked past, I started looking at him. He saw me looking and he continued to stare back at me until he got to that point. And then he gave me that look that tells you, stop looking at me. And that's when I walked outside to tell him, hey, I was just watching you as you walked past and I was looking at your facial features and stuff like, I don't know, I do that. I study faces or I, not study faces, but look at people's faces while they're walking past me or whenever I see a person close up, I look at like the, the eyes, the, the nose, the, the cheeks, the jaw, all of these things for like two or three seconds and it's harmless. It's harmless, but the dude took offense to it, me looking at him and he looked back at me and then he lied when he got here 
And he backtracked. He backtracked because he thinks nobody, he just told me, someone just told me in the ear that nobody in the gay community likes you. So that means there's a, there's a large enough group of people who don't like you. And for that reason, I can do a lot of things to you. Um, I can lie right now and say, you did something you weren't supposed to do. Um, I can lie and say, anything happened because there is a large group of gay people and that's just votes. So basically votes that allow me to do bad things to you. So lots of people I know will agree with me, lie for me, or say things happen that didn't happen to get rid of you, to get, to get rid of me. Uh, because there's, there's enough people who don't like you. There's enough people who don't like you and there's not a big enough group of people who do like you. And that's who that guy was. He lives up there somewhere. That guy lives up there. I, uh, I've been here for about three years. I lived here for about three years and I've been, I've seen him a few times. I don't talk to him. I never speak to him. I never, I don't want to. He's like a, the, like a, a quiet, he doesn't speak. He's like a, like a quieter person? No. He's like a silent, never, no facial expression having person. So whenever he walks past, he never has a facial expression. I, 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 I talk all the time. I love talking. I can't stop talking. I talk to everybody I meet all the time. And uh, when I do, I have many facial expressions. I, I, I have muscles all over my face. And it's from smiling all the time. It's from laughing all the time. It's from talking all the time. So you see somebody with really fat jaw bones, they hardly express themselves. That's the type of dude that he was. So for years, he spent years of his life never expressing himself to the public, to people, for social reasons. So I maintain my facial expressions at all times, everywhere I go. So you never see me walking anywhere quiet or or being disrespectful to people, or like uh, not being happy, not happy, but saying hi to somebody, or not being interested in the people around me. So the dude, um, the dude decided to do that thug, give that thug look you give to somebody when they're staring at you to cause an altercation. And he knows that because there's enough people who don't like me, there's a good chance that if anything happened between us, the things would people would choose to favor him because he's more there are fewer people who don't like him and there are more people who don't like me and I'm not looking for friends I'm not looking to socialize this is a reality there's a large group of gay community members across this city or across and even in our apartment complex who purposefully have chosen to help anyone uh, either get me angry put me in prison or get me to have sex with gay people so that to stay out of prison and that look he gave is one of the looks people give and then a fight you, you usually end up fighting somebody so instead of fighting I chose to talk he didn't want to have an understanding with me he didn't want me to explain myself like I explained myself to you because he wanted bad things to happen he wanted very very bad things to happen he wanted me to fight him it's because of the look he gave and not come outside and start talking to him. And that's when he changed his, so, like the social looks on his face. He put a smile on his face for two seconds. And then he tried to shake my hand because he knew there's a camera now. So now he's being using public appearance instead of a quiet, off-camera personality that lots of people have. You know, they get off camera, they change their personalities. And then when they go get back on camera, they have a different personality. So I pretty much am honest across YouTube, across Twitter. I pretty much have told everyone who I am that I like to tell when something bad happens. So today while I was at work, when I went to work this morning, I went to work to, and I, uh, there's a guy there who bent over. He showed me his butt. And they keep doing that. They keep showing me their butts when I arrive to a location. The people in the gay community. They like doing it, or they like, you know, doing something really quick, gay, something gay that's really fast, or moving their hands, and then acting like a heterosexual, really quick, back to a heterosexual. So that's what that dude did. He he shook his he he bent over, and as you bend over, you know this part of your 
your pants, right, uh, will go down. So that's what he did. He started to put his pants down. I mean, his pants started to fall down, and his butt started to rise out of his pants. And then you can see like a crack. You can see a crack rising out of his pants, and the butt cheeks, they, 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 they start to get bigger, right? Your butt cheeks start to get bigger out of your pants. That guy did that to me twice. He parked in the same spot and he did it twice. And then uh, the he did that twice to me over like a month. So today was the second time he did that. Today was the second time I told him to go fuck himself. Today, he decided to say, I victimized his child because he overheard uh, those words. That's, this is a, that's a lie. It's a freedom of speech. And I'm sure she's heard his, her father use the words, F words, before. Uh, the, the, go, the F word before. Um, my employer told me that because I was at work, it means, that sincerely means, uh, no I wasn't, I was not at work. I arrived to work 20 minutes before I have to go to work. I always do. I always show up to work 20 minutes, maybe better, before I have to be at work. That's just my personal thing that I do when, to make sure I'm always at work on time. Um, and I chill out in my car, listen to music, eat some breakfast, and uh, uh, talk to people who use technology to torture and harass people, you know, electrocute my genitals, play with my anus. Um, and I, I think about either the good things that on my mind or the bad things they keep telling me to think about, like sexual harassment, rape, uh, having sex with gay dudes, um, um, reasons I'm supposed to have sex with gay dudes, reasons I, I, I don't have relationships with people, all of these horrible things these people keep telling me to talk about and think about in my ears, but I, I choose not to. I, I, sincere, I choose not to think about that as much as I can, but that's what I was doing. That's what I normally do at work. I'm sorry, they just use technology to stop me from remembering what I was trying to say. But uh, I sat there, in my, I usually sit in my car and I have that, I have that time to think for 20 minutes and enjoy music and 